Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Few months back, that is on April 2021, Indian Army had issued RFI for 350 lightweight battle tanks. Because conventional Indian tanks are heavy and they are difficult to mobilize on high altitude areas such as Ladakh. At the same time, PLA Army has upper edge over Indian Army with their Type 15 tanks weighing between 33 to 36 tons. Now, Indian Army has realized its requirement of lightweight tanks considering standoff with China. We have already updated our viewers about the RFI of Indian Army and indigenous offers made for the lightweight tanks. Recently, there is some advancements related to lightweight tanks. As we have informed that, sooner or later, Indian Army is going to test the performance of Sprout 2S 25SD tanks and as per recent report, Indian Army is already testing the capability of Sprout SD M1 tanks. Sprout SD M1 light amphibious tank is an upgraded version of Sprout SD tanks. So let's get started and look at the capabilities of these tanks. Sprout SD M1, a modernized version of Sprout SD is a light amphibious tank that has powerful weapon system. It comes with a state of art fire armored protection, a modern automated fire control system, robust engine, a better transmission and efficient chassis than Sprout SD tanks. This lightweight tanks weighs around 18 tons. It is intended for fire support of unit fighting against heavily armored materials. It specializes in destruction of enemy strongholds, defenses and is capable of conducting battle reconnaissance and combat security. It comes with a 125mm 2A75 cannon that can fire guided missiles, armored piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot, high explosive anti-tank and high explosive fragmentation projectiles. The tank also has provision to deal with smaller targets. There is a remote control weapon station with 7.62mm machine gun and a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun. The Sprout is equipped with all the necessities needed to make it an all-climate, all-terrain tank. Due to its superior combat performance and capabilities, this amphibious tank can effectively be used by marines as well as land forces. The Sprout can also travel over a distance of 500 km without refueling and can be transported by military transport aircraft and landing ships besides being parachuted with a crew inside the vehicle. Although this tank scores high on mobility, rapid deployment and air transportability, it compromises on armored protection front. Its front arc can only withstand 12.7mm round hit but this can be enhanced with add-on armor and India can add more armor protection of about 7 tons as the requirement of lightweight tank for Indian Army are about 25 tons as per the RFI. The tank can have 6 smoke grenade dischargers mounted on the turret to offer self-protection for the crew. The Sprout SD M1 fires on the move and when swimming. Its sensor suits allow the crew to engage the target round the clock in low visibility environment. The tank also features a modern highly automated fire control system. The main reason Indian Army is heading towards Russian technology is limited time. Indian Army wants light tanks as soon as possible which Russia can fulfill with its already in service Sprout SD M1. Whereas, other vendors like Tata, Hanwha Defense, etc. does not have ready to test system. In our opinion, Indian Army should split its requirement of RFI and buy some Russian tanks as per RFI standards to fulfill its immediate requirement. On another hand, Indian Army should float separate RFI for indigenous development of lightweight tanks. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your view about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions on any topic related to defense sector 
on which you want to hear from us with this i would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends please like and subscribe our channel if you have not done already we will soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector